Experimental design and psychology means that you've got your participants and now you need to arrange them in such a way as to increase the validity and the reliability of the experiment. There are three experimental designs that you need to know, independent groups, repeated measures and matched pairs. And if you're a university student, you might know those as between groups, within groups and matched pairs and it means exactly the same thing. A way to remember it is if you look at this picture, you can see these uh, really angry penguins with their designer handbags. And so when you hear experimental design, I want you to think design, designer handbags, and remember the penguins are angry, and say, I get really mad matching penguins, which stands for independent groups, repeated measures, and matched pairs. So before I explain what the three experimental designs are, I'm just going to show you this stimulus for material. So a researcher believes that using a mobile phone when driving affects concentration. She has access to a driving simulator. The IV is using a mobile phone in a driving simulator or not using a mobile phone in a driving simulator. And the DV is the number of driving errors. You might want to pause the video now and see if you can write a directional hypothesis using the IV and the DV. So the directional hypothesis is Participants using a mobile phone in a driving simulator will make more driving errors than participants not using a mobile phone in a driving simulator. So that's the experiment that we're going to use, and that's the stimulus material. So the first experimental design is called independent groups, and that really uh, is what it says it is. You get your participants and you split them into two independent groups, and each group does one condition of the IV. So the IV is either using a mobile phone or not using a mobile phone in the driving simulator. So group A do the task without a mobile phone, group B do the task with a mobile phone, and then the experimenter compares uh, the number of driving errors between the two independent groups. So a good thing about independent groups design is that because participants only do one condition of the IV, that means that they're less likely to guess the purpose of the study. Um, in repeated measures design, which we'll look at in a moment, all the participants do both conditions of the IV. Um, and so if you're doing the experiment with a mobile phone and without a mobile phone, then you're likely to guess that the experimenter is expecting you to make more mistakes probably with the mobile phone. And therefore, you might um, like drive less carefully, uh, and it could affect your performance. With independent groups design, um, you only do one condition of the IV, so there's less chance of you guessing the purpose of the study and reacting accordingly. Uh, and this is called um, demand characteristics. When you guess the purpose of a study and start behaving unnaturally, we say that the participants are displaying demand characteristics. So independent groups design is less likely to have those demand characteristics because the participants only do one condition of the IV. And that's a good strength of the design. Another strength of the independent groups design is that you're less likely to show order effects. So order effects means that if you were to do both conditions of the IV, then your performance may be affected by the order in which you do the experiment. So the order effects um, are boredom, where your performance would decrease because you can bored with the task during the second condition. Fatigue, and again your performance decreases as you might become tired, or the practice effect, and that's where your performance actually increases. And if you think about driving, if you've already driven, say, for an hour in a driving simulator, then you would have practiced being in the driving simulator, and so when you did the second condition uh, of the IV, then you might actually improve because you've been practicing. And so order effects affect the validity because your performance could actually decrease or increase according to the order in which you do the different conditions of the IV. But independent groups design won't suffer from order effects because you only do one condition of the IV. So that's another strength of independent groups design. However, there are some weaknesses of independent groups design. You need more participants in your sample. So if you think about repeated measures where all the participants do both conditions of the IV, you're going to end up with double the amount of data because everyone's doing both conditions. So for independent groups design, um, you would need more participants um, to increase the actual amount of data that you've got to work with. Also, because you've got completely independent groups of people in the different conditions, it could be that some people in one group are just naturally better at the task than in the other group. They might have certain characteristics. So in this case, it could be they've got more driving experience or they've got better concentration.
And so a weakness of the independent groups design is the fact that you can't control for those participant variables, and that can act as a confounding variable, uh, which means that a confounding variable is something that systematically changes with the IV. So if you've got one group of people who are just naturally better at driving, that means they're bound to do better. And so the, the confounding variable, the fact that they're better at driving, it looks like um, driving with a mobile phone causes less errors or more errors, but actually it could just be the, those participant variables. So the way we control for this is to do random allocation of participants to the different conditions. And that means that um, it avoids bias and hopefully spread those individual differences between the participants across the two independent groups. So that's a control measure for the independent group's design. When do we use an independent group's design? Um, so you would use an independent group's design in a quasi and, and natural experiment. So if you don't know about those, you can watch my video on experimental method. But in short, a quasi-experiment means that you are testing the difference between two different groups of people. So there's no random allocation of participants to conditions. You might be testing the difference between men and women for their driving ability, in which case you can't randomly allocate people to one condition because they are what they are. Sometimes the task will dictate that you have to use an independent group's design. And that means that if you try to do the experiment with repeated measures, with all the participants doing both conditions of the IV, that the participants would definitely display demand characteristics. Um, it might ruin the whole purpose of the experiment. So I'll give you an example. If you're a psychology student, you should know about Milgram's experiment. And in his baseline study, he was looking at legitimacy, um, obedience to legitimate authority. That was what he wanted to do. And after his original experiment, which you know with all the electric shocks, he then did some variations on that. And he um, varied things like the location, um, the proximity of the learner to the teacher, um, the power of uniform, um, and many other variables. So if we look at the one for location, um, some people did the experiment at Yale University, and some people did the experiment at a rundown office in Connecticut. And that was to see whether a prestigious location like Yale University would cause more obedience. So once you've done the experiment once and you think it's about punishment on learning, but as we know it's really on obedience to legitimate authority, once you've done it once you can't then go and repeat the experiment in Connecticut in a rundown office because you know the purpose of the study. So therefore Milgram's variations had to be independent groups design because otherwise it would affect the validity of the results. Another point to say is that with quasi and natural experiments, because there's no random allocation of participants to conditions, um, that in and so it has to be independent groups design. However, um, that does cause a problem because the control measure for independent groups is to do random allocation, but we can't with a, with a quasi or a natural experiment. So for that, all you can really do is make sure that the sample size is big enough that you're going to spread those individual differences of the participants across the two independent groups. Experimental design is called repeated measures. And as I said before, that means that all of the participants do both conditions of the IV. So in our experiment, all of the participants do the experiment with a mobile phone and without a mobile phone. And then the researcher compares the number of driving errors of the two different conditions of the IV. So the limitations of the repeated measures design, so the weaknesses of it, are actually the strengths of the independent groups. So it's quite easy once you know them, you can just swap them over. So um, repeated measures um, is actually affected by order effects because you're doing both conditions of the IV. And in our experiment, it would probably be that you would practice being in the driving simulator and that would make your performance better in the second condition. So the way we control for order effects is through something called counterbalancing, and it's also called the ABBA effect. So when you counterbalance, you get all of your participants, split them in two, half the participants do condition A followed by condition B, and the other half of the participants do condition B followed by condition A. And so in our experiment, that means that group one do the driving simulator task with a mobile phone first, and then second, they do the driving task without a mobile phone. And group two, first of all, they do the driving simulator task without a mobile phone. And second of all, they do the driving simulator task with a mobile phone. And so that controls for order effects. 
Another problem with repeated measures design is the possibility of demand characteristics. So, as I said, demand characteristics is where you guess the purpose of the study and then you behave unnaturally. So, because you're doing both conditions of the IV, you might think, oh, well, the experimenter thinks I'm going to do worse with a mobile phone. And therefore, they might not try as hard or they might try and prove the experimenter wrong and actually like concentrate super hard and, and it will affect the validity of the results. But some strengths of repeated measures designs are that you don't need a large sample because you've got double the amount of data because both all the participants do both conditions. So you don't need to recruit such a large sample. And another strength is that you um, don't have individual differences of participants. So each participant acts as their own control because they are in both conditions of the IV. So when do we use a repeated measures design? So we're not going to use it for a natural or a quasi experiment because we can't. Um, but we will use it if the task dictates that we can use it without demand characteristics or order effects being a problem, then we would use a repeated measures design. So um, Peterson and Peterson's trigram study to test the duration of short-term memory, um, you will know, hopefully, that um, they um, experimented on a lot of students and they told them a nonsense trigram like JFL187. Uh, that's a nonsense trigram. And then they got the students, uh, the participants who were students to count backwards in threes from that number, 187, they count backwards in threes um, for a time interval. And after a certain amount of time, they would then have to say the trigram forwards. And that was to test the duration of short-term memory. And so they had different amounts of time intervals. There was like 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18 seconds uh, in a kind of random order. And so those different time intervals were the conditions of the IV. And so each person did each different condition of the IV. And that's what makes that a repeated measures design. The third experimental design is matched pairs. And this is a bit of a combination between independent groups and repeated measures. Because in matched pairs, you get two independent groups do one condition each of the IV, like you do with the independent groups. However, you try and match all the people in one condition to the other condition to try and make it more like repeated measures, to try and make the people in this condition very similar to the people in that one, and so they act like their own control. And so it has advantages like independent groups that there's fewer demand characteristics and less order effects, um, and it's got the strengths of the repeated measures in that all the people kind of act as their own control. And so it's a really good thing to do, but it takes ages to actually find the participants and match them up, and that's a limitation. And the sorts of things you would match people up on are things like maybe age and sex and um, sexuality, po political belief, um, all, the, all those kind of characteristics. So if somebody in one group is, um, so, so if we look at Dame Sarah's story, so she's female, she's an Olympian uh, athlete, um, we might match her up with someone like Simone Biles, who is also female and, and an Olympian athlete, and we're like, oh yeah, they look like good controls for each other. However, when you look at them, there are other characteristics that are different. So they're from different countries, different ethnicity, different marital status. And so that's a limitation of the match pairs design, is that each person is unique and you can never fully match them up. Even if you had identical twins, they are still individual people who have differences, individual characteristics about them. So it tries to forge together the independent groups design and the repeated measures, but there are limitations to it, and the amount of time it takes and the difficulty, and that you can never fully match them up, are the limitations of it. see those eyes, I see those lies you keep From me now I realize those truths you hide Yet still, it's never forgotten What you mean to me Can I hold on now, just wait and see If I stay